small environment and she got up here and just ran. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great fun. Oh, here comes, oh, Jano. I think Jano was gonna, there's Jano, yay. Hello, Jano, good morning. Jano. She got to get her audio connected. Yeah. Look at all these faces. Mm -hmm. Beautiful weather, huh? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> She doesn't eating my breakfast. I like the warm weather. I like the warm weather though. I have Oh yeah. Uh, Hi, Evan Tabor. Hello. <laughs> Cynthia, can you hear us now? I'm inside. <laughs> okay, here. Jano, raise your oh, hand if you oh, can hear oh, us. Nice. Can you hear us, Jano? Now yeah, I can hear guys. Now you can hear. Hi, good morning. There she is. Hi, hey, Jenna. Cynthia, we can hear you. Cynthia, how did you fix it? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I switched my That's iPad. Funny. It was something on my computer, which is normally functioning well. So I'm not sure. I turned it off, and but I'm on the iPad. So okay. Hi, yeah. Jano. Oh, she's Nelson. still connecting to edit audio. I think this is Jano's first time on. Okay. Hi, good morning, David. Right. There she is. Good morning, Susie. Hi. Hi. I already showed my pajamas. I'm not showing them again. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you missed out. Oh, I dear. have found you, which is something of a miracle. You know? Yeah, I had to. Welcome. I had to search around a bit. Well, yeah. there you are. Nothing. Good morning, David. Anything you shall find. Good morning, Dean. I see you snuck in there. I combed my hair at my wife's request. <laughs> <laughs> Awfully fine. Because you always do everything she asks you to also, don't you, Malcolm? I tried to do it on, no, I, no, no, no. I, I ended up doing it on YouTube this morning. I couldn't get it on Zoom or on the other thing. Is there someone at the door? I did it on YouTube. But you're on Zoom now. Am I? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> right, okay, I'm on Zoom now. I tried to do it on YouTube and I couldn't get it to work. Yeah, Zoom's easier, I think. Zoom's changed their, updated their program too. Yeah, so yeah. Might, um, yeah. Be causing people some. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's Jano. Good morning, yeah, Jano. Yeah, flash me big. Yay, Jano. Joan got you on. Fantastic. Well, well, yeah. This is the first time I I learned some more about how to get on and and whatnot. I'm going. They're going to be doing a Zoom of my exercise class on Tuesday. Uh, Great. Morning, Excellent. 11, Good. So. Good. I learned a lot of stuff about Zoom and with that. It's fun, Jenna. Well, I'm going to mute us all. And uh, as we've hit our hour and ask Barbara yes. to move us into this morning's worship service with the prelude. Barbara? Mm
Welcome, friends, to the Congregational Church of Salisbury, United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Welcome if you are old or young or a little bit of each, believing or doubting or a little bit of each, LGBT, QIAP or straight, hungry or full, hurting or hoping. Welcome to worshipers of all colors, all genders, all relationship statuses, all states of mind. Because you are here, the Congregational Church of Salisbury is whole and perfect. Welcome. We'll begin our time together in worship with announcements of interest and concern to our church community and also with prayer. If you have particular prayers, I encourage you to use the chat function in Zoom to, uh, to share those. Um, one announcement, a reminder that the church council will be meeting at 1115 today, shortly after worship concludes, um, where we have the delightful task of uh, considering the recommendation of the music committee uh, for a transitional music director. So I look forward to seeing church council a little bit later. Are there other announcements for us? Well, let me ask if there are particular prayers. Uh, Betsy is offering a prayer for all of our country as we face a time of enormous turmoil and upheaval. And we are praying that God will be with the bereaved family and friends of George Lloyd, that God will be with the man who callously took his life, that God will be with those who are shocked to confront the depth and violence of white supremacy, that God will be with those for whom this act of evil has unleashed the pain of decades of denigration and abuse, that God will be with those who cannot see a way to end the violence, that God will be with those who are doing the work of dismantling the powers of dominance and racism, that God will let that hard and holy work begin in us. We pray for the family and friends of Fran Roberts, including her good friend, Peggy Hayes. We pray for the family and friends of Calvin Thompson, who has died. And for uh, Dick Godlieb, who is recovering from brain surgery and for Leslie, for their dear friends, Malcolm and Louise Brown. We pray for Tony Quartararo and uh, for his daughter, Lucia Mulder, and for all of their family. Let us hold all of these whom we have named in prayer and also the prayers that are on our hearts but not yet spoken in words. Let us be in silent prayer together. God, on this day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came and swept through the followers of Jesus like wind and flame, a day that created the church, we pray that your spirit will sweep through us with wind and flame, the wind of peace and the flame of justice and enliven your church again with your spirit of wholeness, harmony, joy, and wonder. 
We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And before we move on to this morning's intro, Angela reminded me that I forgot one announcement. Um, Angela is going to be at the meeting house a little later this morning from 1130 to 1230. Uh, stop by there if you would like to see the outline of the proposed all access ramp to the front of the meeting house, which has been recommended by our board of trustees and by the church council. And now let me turn us over to Barbara for and to Lee for this morning's intro. call to worship this morning are verses from the book of Acts of the Apostles that describe that first Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Πλήστησαν πάντες πνεύματος γύου, καρξαντο λελεντέρες γλώσσες καθστάθ πνεύμα δίδου ποφθέγγες θεάτος. Όλους φορούν γένος δελ Εσπίριτου Σαντού και κομμενσάρον να βλάρ εν ότρας λέγγουας, σεγούν ελ Εσπίριτου λες δάβα αβιλιζάς παρα εξπρεσάρσε. Φαέμταλαου γαμίαν μεν αρούχ وأخذوا يتكلمون بلغات أخرى مثل ما منحه مروح أن ينطق. और आत्मा के द्वारा दिए गए सामर्थ्य के अनुसार वे दूसरी भाषाओं में बोलने लगे All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The day of Pentecost is here. The day when the flames of faith dance in our hearts. The day of Pentecost is here. The day when our babbling speech becomes the good news for the world. The day of Pentecost is here. The day when compassion is seared into our souls. The day of Pentecost is here. Let the people of God rejoice. Hallelujah.
We yearn for change, but hold close the comfort of what we have. We long for new life, but let the Holy Spirit blow past without following. We could open our arms to others, but that would mean releasing our fears. Let us pray for the Spirit to come and dance among us as we unburden ourselves together, saying, Your Spirit moves over the waters, gracious God, but we prefer to splash in the puddles of temptation. You would breathe life into us in every moment, but we hold our breath, wanting to get our way. You would give us the words to bring hope to the despairing, to offer healing to the broken, and to share hope in the places of anger and violence, but we often stay silent or use words that lack compassion. In your mercy, forgive us, God of gusty grace. May your spirit sing in our hearts so we may invite others to dance and joy with us. May your spirit be the still small voice that silences the shouts of fear and worry all around us. May your spirit sweep us off our feet and into the arms of Jesus Christ, our brother, our savior, our companion. Amen. In every breath we take, there is the Spirit. In every word we speak, there is the Spirit. In every heart we touch, there is the Spirit. In every person we welcome, there is the Spirit. In forgiveness, we are given the words to speak, the courage to reach out to others, the open heart to offer others, the breath of life to share with those around us. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. I want to tell you a story for a thought for young minds about a girl named Dimpola. At lunch after church, Dimpola looked up from her plate and said, Pentecost isn't fun like Easter. 
Why do you say that, said her father. We had lots of fun things to do on Easter. I had a new dress. We made Easter cards in Sunday school and there was an Easter egg hunt. All we did in Sunday school today was talk about a weird story. What weird story? The one where everybody's hair caught on fire. That does sound like a weird story. You know what may, really makes it weird? No, said Dimpola. What makes it weird is that their hair didn't catch on fire, but when they looked at each other, they saw something they had never seen before. Do you know what they saw? What? They saw God. I thought you can't see God, said Dimpola. Sometimes you can see something and you see God at the same time, said her dad. I don't get it. Maybe it's like an Easter egg hunt, said her mother. You look at a bush and you don't see anything but the bush. And then you look at the bush and you see an egg that was there all the time. Why don't we wash up the dishes and then go out in the backyard for a God hunt? A God hunt? It'll be fun. When they got out in the yard, Dimpola said, where do we look? What do you think, said her dad? Should we stand here and look at the whole yard? Or should we get up close to something and look very carefully? Or should we look up in the sky, said Dimpola. And they began looking. They looked. And they looked, sometimes high, sometimes low, sometimes right up close, sometimes very far back. And Dimpola said, it is fun looking for God. Later that night, as Dimpola and her mom and dad were in her bedroom, getting ready to read a Bible story and say prayers before she went to sleep, Dimpola said, when we pray, how come we look down? I thought God is up. Her mother, who was a fast thinker, said, we close our eyes and look down because we are looking at our hearts to make sure that our hearts are looking up. And they said a prayer together. And I invite you to say the prayer that Dimpola and her parents said, let us pray. Dear God, we like to look for you and we love to see you. Help us find you. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's the story of Dimpola. And as we've been doing in recent weeks, I invite you to imagine now that you are reaching your hands out to take the hand of another in our worshiping congregation. We are spread out far beyond the reach of our hands, except for those fortunate to be together with a friend or a partner. But reach out your hands and imagine that this body of Christ is holding one another in the spirit of Jesus and in the name of Jesus as we pray together the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'll ask Cynthia and Hannah to lead us in this morning's responsive Psalter. O oh, Holy One, how many and how varied are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea vast and spacious with its creatures beyond number, living things both small and great. There go the ships, 
and the sea monster that you formed to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food when it is due. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your breath, they are created. When you renew the face of the earth, may the splendor of the most high endure forever. May the almighty rejoice in the works of creation. God is the one who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the creator as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to the eternal one as I rejoice in my God. Honor, Honor the, the Holy One, one O oh my, my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. A second reading for us this morning comes from the book of Numbers. Here is a story where Moses has complained to God that the leadership of the people of Israel, who are dissatisfied that all God has given them to eat is manna, the leadership is too heavy for him to bear on his own. God has decided to appoint subordinates to share the burden of leadership. They will receive some of God's spirit. A reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 24 to 30. Moses went out and spoke to the people the words of Yahweh. He gathered 70 men from the elders of the people and had them stand around the tent. And Yahweh came down in a cloud and spoke to Moses. And Yahweh extended some of the rushing spirit that was upon Moses and put it upon the 70 men, the elders. And it was when the spirit rested upon them that they acted like prophets but did not continue. Now, two men remained in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, the name of the second Medad, and the spirit rested upon them. They were among those recorded, but they had not gone out to the tent and they acted like prophets in the camp. A certain lad ran and told Moses. He said, Eldad and Medad are acting like prophets in the camp. Then Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' attendant from his youth, spoke up. He said, my Lord Moses, contain them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for me? Oh, would, oh who would give that all the prophets of Yahweh, all the people of Yahweh were prophets? And Yahweh would put the rush of God's spirit upon each one. Moses took himself back to the camp, he and the elders of Israel. This ends our reading from Numbers. Let us pray. Gracious God, boil the hinges of our heart's doors, that they may swing open widely and freely at your coming. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. The last days are already here. That's what Peter said on Pentecost. I wonder what sort of events come to mind for you when you hear someone declare that the last days have arrived. Destruction, chaos, Maybe psychosis, fear, uncertainty. The last days have arrived, said Peter on Pentecost. And Peter quoted the prophet Joel. A portion of that prophecy sounds like the scary out of control end times that some people depict today. And this 
today is 26 or 30 centuries after Joel wrote, I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of God's great and glorious day. That could be a description of the last days. Or maybe it's a description of what happens finally when the greenhouse gases spew uncontrollably. And we turn our backs on every effort to deal with the climate chaos. But before the talk of darkness and blood, Peter remembered something else that old Joel had said. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. How can you tell when the times are changing, when it is not just the preachers and the pundits and the politicos who are speaking up, it's you. Because God's spirit respects no hierarchy, follows no human protocol, and acts out of control. This is the day, Pentecost, when we remember that the term Pentecostal belongs not just to one particular tradition that began at the Apostolic Faith Mission on Azusa Street in Los Angeles in 1906. Pentecostal describes all followers of Jesus, all church folk, since the church was born on the day of Pentecost when the spirit showed up like wind and fire and said, this is for everybody. So the great task of the church is to be ready for the spirit that is going to do something with you, ready or not. Sounds fun, right? I expect some of you maybe are now thinking of the story that's gone around of the huge refinery fire. Flames shot hundreds of feet into the air, sky thick with grimy smoke, heat so intense that the firefighters had to park their trucks a block away and wait for the flames to die down before, before they could begin to fight the fire, now about to rage utterly out of control. Suddenly, its horn blowing from several blocks away, a fire truck came racing down the street. With brakes screeching, it hit the curb in front of the fire and plunged in. The firefighters leapt out and began to battle the blaze. All the other firefighters parked a block away saw this. They jumped into their trucks, drove down, and joined their companions in fighting the fire. As a result of that cooperative effort, they managed to bring the inferno under control. Afterwards, the townspeople wanted to show their gratitude for the firefighters who led the charge. They decided to give the captain and his crew a special award to recognize their heroism. At the ceremony, the mayor said, Captain, we want to honor your company for your outstanding bravery. We are in awe of what you did. If there were one special thing you could have, anything, what would it be? Without hesitation, the captain replied, Your Honor, we'd like a new set of brakes for the truck. Brakes are a good thing on a fire truck or any vehicle, but the followers of Jesus Christ, like you and me, have a different kind of calling to let the Spirit hit the gas pedal, which the Spirit can do, thank goodness, without even burning more fossil fuels. The Spirit that showed up on that Pentecost brings the fire of God's passion to us. And that spirit has no breaks, just accelerated love, accelerated mercy, forgiveness love, forgiveness justice, healing love, new life love. The world could use some Pentecostal Christians, I tell you. That might not be the first way that you describe your faith. 
But if it isn't on the list of your faith values, well, you can always change. Actually, that might be the whole meaning and definition of church, changed and charged by the Holy Spirit without even needing permission from the church council or any of the boards or committees or anyone at all, like old Eldad and Medad, who were speaking up without having even passed any of the prophecy tests, which made the rest of the prophets rather testy, to which Moses said, let them be. Would that God would pour out a speaking spirit on everyone. That's a part of what it means to embrace the spirit of Pentecost. We live with the expectation that the Holy Spirit can make use of us without warning, without explanation. Imagine living in that expectancy. Do you remember way back to the beginning of Lent, the story that sent us into that season was Jesus in the wilderness, alone, facing the devil, whatever that means but doing it alone, attended to by angels later on because he was alone without human companionship. And do you remember back to Easter seven weeks ago, the disciples scattering, Judas betraying, Peter denying, all of them fleeing Jerusalem, their togetherness undone. But today is a different story. Today is Pentecost, the birthday of the church, and the extraordinary, startling, life-changing arrival of the Holy Spirit happens not somewhere off in the wilderness, not in a solitary communing with God in the glory of nature, not when we're headed in different directions, but in the middle of a church gathering, even one like this online. This is part of being Pentecost people. Private devotions and solitary spirituality have their place and they are rich for encountering the mystery of God, but coming together is indispensable for sharing the spirit. I'm not saying that a church committee meeting is the only place where the spirit is gonna show up, but it should be on the list, maybe even near the top, according to scripture. The birthday of the church isn't like other birthdays. We don't blow out the candles. We get together and we get lit. As a Christian visionary once wrote, the day will come when after harnessing space, the winds, the tides and gravitation, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And on that day, for the second time in the history of the world, we shall have discovered fire. So loosen up and get lit, church. Get ready to be changed and charged by the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit blow you right into someone's heart. It is Pentecost. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy One, your Spirit has never stopped moving from blowing over the waters at creation to blowing through the camp where Moses heard of Eldad and Medad speaking the words of God, to blowing through the gathered people at Pentecost, to blowing through our lives right now. Keep on blowing through us, Holy Spirit, wind and flame. Animate our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our voices, that we may call out the vision of wholeness, of harmony, of justice, of joy, of every person, of every creature, of all creation, treasured by you, deserving of love and dignity. Make us Pentecostal for your sake, Holy God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
we come to the offering in our service and though we cannot be together to pass the plate and to share our generosity, to share our tithes and our gifts, we remember the generosity of God blowing through us the way the spirit blows through us. We remember that the work of the church does not stop simply because we cannot be in one place. We remember with gratitude so many of you who are continuing to fulfill your pledges of support by check or by uh, online payments. We invite all of us to continue in supporting the missions and the ministries of wholeness, harmony, justice, and joy, of neighborliness, building up our community. We can contribute by mail, we can contribute online. I invite your gifts for building up the fellowship of God. This church exists because the Holy Spirit blew and burned into the hearts of people ready to respond. The same spirit that transformed the lives of our ancestors is gusting and sparking still. We open ourselves by giving from the heart, knowing that God will use all our tithes and offerings, our hearts and minds, our bodies and spirits and limitations and passions to build the beloved community. Let us gather our gifts with grateful praise and offer them to God's purposes. Let us pray together. God, we recall your spirit poured out long ago 
and we remember your spirit poured into us today. May your generosity inspire ours. May your longing for shalom fire ours. May your dream of one human family become ours. We bless all that we give to that holy purpose. Amen. And before I offer a benediction, Cynthia sent a note to uh, let us all know that there is a peaceful vigil scheduled for today at the Salisbury Green in front of the White Hart at three o'clock to grieve the death of George Floyd and to stand in solidarity for racial justice. I invite you to be present there in person or in prayer as we all continue to pray for the healing of our nation and for the Spirit's work to move us to participate in that great effort. And now, beloveds, receive this benediction. May God bless you and watch over you. May the radiance of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you wholeness, harmony, justice, joy, shalom, now and evermore. Our worship concludes, our service continues. Go and let the spirit blow you and speak through you for the healing of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Barb and Lee. You're welcome.